My name is Dr. Patty Christie, and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about Lewis dot structures. We are going to go through and get you to, to be able to draw the basic and the exceptions. The relevant reading is chapter 10 in your textbook, pages 363 to 372. Alright, the learning objectives of this unit are to 1. Learn to draw Lewis electron dot structures of molecules. 2. To be able to understand the concept of the octet rule in how it relates to Lewis dot structures and be able to also understand that there are exceptions to the octet rule and understand where you need to apply the octet rule and when, where you don't. We're going to use formal charge. We need to be able to understand how to calculate the formal charge and we have to be able to um, use it to verify that we have what we call the best Lewis structure. We're going to be able to draw resonance structures. You need to understand when and where resonance structures exist and be able to draw them accurately. All right, Lewis dot diagrams were created by G. N. Lewis in 1912 to understand how molecules are formed. It's a classical model of bonding, and the electrons are represented by dots. To draw the Lewis symbol for any main group element, you need to note the A group number, which gives the number of valence electrons. So looking at the second row periodic table, you can see we go from lithium all the way to neon, increasing the number of valence electrons, starting with one up to a complete octet. And if we take a look at um, nitrogen, nitrogen is in group 5A and therefore has five valence electrons. All right, now that we know the number of valence electrons, you need to place one dot at a time on each of the four sides of the element symbol. You keep adding the dots, pairing them up until all are used up. So we can go back to our nitrogen example. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so the possible ways you can organize them are as two on top, two on bottom, two on one side, and two on the other side. And it does not matter which one you use. The octet rule states that when atoms bond, they lose, gain, or share electrons to attain a filled outer shell of eight electrons, except for hydrogen and lithium, which have a octet of two. This means that for nitrogen with five valence electrons, it wants to attain three more electrons to gain eight electrons. All right, so we can take a look at our periods uh, row two and three and be able to predict how many bonds each one of the elements are going to attempt to make in order to complete their octet. So atoms share electrons to achieve a full outer level of electrons. The shared electrons are called a shared pair or bonding pair. This shared pair is represented as a pair of dots or a line. So we can represent those electrons as dots or lines, it does not matter. An outer electron pair that is not involved in bonding is called a lone pair or an unshared pair. And below here you can see F2 with all dots or with a combination of dots and dashes. So the electrons can be represented by dots or dashes and the number of bonds between the atoms can be calculated by counting the number of shared electrons. So for instance, if you have a single, you have two shared electrons. A double, we have four shared electrons and a triple, we have six shared electrons. Now let us do some examples. Now those are at the bottom of the video, 